The Little Mermaid made a lot of news this weekend because they announced that Halle Bailey, not Halle Berry, two completely different people, Halle Berry is Storm from the original X-Men trilogy, Halle Bailey is going to be playing Ariel. So in the live-action remake, they are having a black actress that is going to play Ariel. And what's odd about this is I'm pretty sure that what happened in reaction to this is sort of a school marming by the left for people on the right that were upset about this. But the problem is I had a really hard time finding anybody on the right that was actually upset because I saw an awful lot of reaction to the outrage of this taking place, but I couldn't actually find anybody that was outraged. And so it was a bunch of people on the left, a bunch of social justice warriors getting up on their pulpit and dictating down to us why we're so stupid and ignorant and wrong and racist for being angry that a black actress is going to be playing the little mermaid. But I had a really hard time finding anybody that actually was mad about it. I found some people that said, I, I wish they'd gone in a different direction, but I didn't find anybody that was upset that this was, you know, that, that she was going to be playing the little mermaid. I, I, this seems to me, and I could be wrong, but it seems to me this is the same thing that happened when that video of AOC came out. You may remember a while back, several months ago, that there was a video of AOC that came out when she was, I guess she shot it when she was in college, and it's just her dancing around with a bunch of her friends. And uh, the left came out and talked about how horrible it was and how it was sexist and racist. Um, I don't know how it's sexist and racist, but how it was sexist and racist for the right to criticize her for doing that. But I really didn't know anybody on the right that had a problem with it. I couldn't find any prominent people on the right, not one myself included, and I saw the video before I saw the reaction to it, um, that was upset about it. Not one person. And so this seems to be a very similar story to where there was a, to put it in economic terms, the supply of outrage did not meet the demand. So the left was full-on expecting people on the right to be upset about this and to go into full-on rage, rage mode, and when nobody did, they just decided to talk about how silly it was for them to do so anyway. So in other words, they crafted the narrative before the story actually broke that people on the left just decided, well, a bunch of those evil white conservatives would be very upset about this, and so we need to go ahead and react to it. But the thing is, there really wasn't anybody on the right that was upset to it, and so they were reacting to a story that never happened exactly like in the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez dancing video. Nobody was bothered by that. Not one. And so they really kind of manufactured this whole thing from beginning to end, even though there was really nobody that I saw, at least, that was actually upset about a black person playing The Little Mermaid. But I do want to bring a little bit of, because I do think there's some, there's some cultural significance underlying this. Two things can be true at once, and I want you to remember this. First of all, there's nothing inherently wrong with a black person playing a mermaid. Not at all. Don't have a problem with it. And so that's the first thing. Because mermaid legends started in Syria. Not necessarily black people, but Arabic people. And those legends spread throughout the world. Um, we think that Syria is the oldest. We're not 100% sure, but that's kind of where we believe it originated. And it was very prominent in Nordic culture. It was very prominent in, in you know, with uh, uh, the legends of Europe. We even see them spreading so far that there are some legends originating out of, of the East that seem similar to mermaids. And so mermaids don't quite have the coverage of dragons. Every culture has a dragon story. Every culture has a flood story. But not that many, not quite as many have them on mermaids, but it's close. I mean, you're talking about a range of legends that, that go all the way from the Middle East all the way up to Iceland, the Scandinavian countries, and then some parts of Asia. So they've got a pretty big spread. 
And I don't know if it's because the legends themselves moved or there were different accounts that just kind of got meshed together that happened sometimes with myth and, myths and legends. And being somebody that I wouldn't say I'm an aficionado on folklore, but I, I study it a little bit closer than, than most people probably do. I can tell you that there would have been a, a big variety on how mermaids looked. And you can even see that in pop culture. Um, for example, if you've seen, oh, what is it? Chamber of Secrets in Harry Potter the mermaids in Harry Potter look like fish from, from head to toe. They, they have fish people, they're green, they have scales all the way top to bottom. And then people in Atlantis look almost entirely human. And what I'm talking about there is like the DC Comics version of Atlantis, or actually the Marvel version of Atlantis. Namor looks like a normal guy, more or less. And so does Aquaman. And so just like you can see in pop culture, there's a, a wide, wide variety of what mer people look like. You see a similar thing in the legends. There's not a one set specific way that mer people are supposed to look. And so even more so than a lot of other legends, you could see how it wouldn't be that far fetched to have a black person playing a fictional mythological creature like a mermaid. But nonetheless, even though that that is true, it would be a lot different, a lot different, if the shoe were on the other foot. And what I mean by that is, it's not exactly the same as if they had a white girl playing Jasmine or Mulan, because those characters exist in a specific region and have a specific race, whereas a mermaid could be just about anybody. You know, they're not specifically Aramaic or, or specifically black or specifically white or spe specifically Hispanic. That's just not the case with mermaids. They're fictitious characters, whereas Jasmine's supposed to exist somewhere in the Middle East, you know, around a thousand or two thousand years ago. And the same with uh, even though, you know, it's it's a, a white girl, uh, Cinderella is somewhere in France around a certain time. Same thing with Belle. And so the different Disney characters, there are some that have a specific race because they existed at a specific time in a specific place. The Little Mermaid, not so much. The original animated story is supposed to take place somewhere in the Scandinavian countries, but I, you know, it's not real specific, and it's not really all that important to the story that that take place. It doesn't change the story in any significant way for her to be in a different location in the world. I mean, Atlantica, the fictional undersea kingdom that she's from, could be virtually anywhere. And so for that reason, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get up in arms about the, the race of the character changing. That would be different with somebody like Mulan or Jasmine, who have a specific race. Or Pocahontas, for example. She's specifically Native American. It wouldn't make much sense to have an actor that isn't that race playing them. But you can bet your boots that if they did that, that if they change the race of somebody like, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Tatiana, I guess, is the, the princess from The Princess and the Frog. She's not somebody that would necessarily have to be black. Her story takes place in Louisiana. And there's a pretty good diversity of people in Louisiana. So it wouldn't change the story at all for her to be a white person. But I guarantee you, that if they changed it, the left would have lost their freaking minds. If they had taken somebody that in the animated version is black and in the live action version cast a white character to play her, boy, you would have seen the left come out knives and fangs first. That would have been all we were talking about for about two or three days. And maybe I'm projecting a little bit there, but I don't think I am. And I think pretty much everybody that's been watching this whole social justice warrior thing play out knows that they would have been up in arms and been furious if something like that had happened. And so that's the two things can be, that can be true at the same time. One, that there's absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever with having a black person play Ariel in The Little Mermaid. But the second, if the shoe were on the other foot, Yes, the left would have thrown an absolute hissy fit. And anybody with an ounce of common sense knows that. 
Uh, I mean, look at how angry they got at Aladdin before anything had ever happened. I can't tell you the number of social justice warrior posts I saw on, on Twitter that were all upset and, and were predicting that Disney was going to whitewash Aladdin and they weren't going to have Middle Eastern actors playing him. It was fine. It was actually a pretty good movie. But here's another thing that can also be true. Not everyone that would prefer a traditional Ariel, somebody that looks more like the animated version, is a racist. And one way that I'll kind of prove that is, earlier this year, there were rumors that Queen Latifah was going to play Ursula. Now, it turns out those rumors are not true, and that there was not even talk of her playing Ursula, even though I think she actually would have been a good cast for it. But did you notice there was no outrage about that either? Why? In the cartoon version, Ursula is purple. She doesn't appear to have any clear race. Ariel pretty clearly has a race in the animated version. Doesn't mean that nobody that's a different race than her could play her in the live action. Just, I'm saying, in the animated version, it's pretty clear that Ariel's a white girl. Not just a white girl, a white red-headed girl. The fairest skinned of all the people. And I, I know that because my sister is a redhead. She burns if she stands out in the sun for 20 minutes. But anyway, <laughs> um, but when it comes to that, Ariel in the animated version is pretty clearly a white girl. Ursula has no clear race. And because of that, nobody batted an eye when the rumors were coming out that Queen Latifah was going to play Ursula because no one cared. It's not that they don't want black actors in this movie or think that black actors shouldn't be allowed. It's just that they would prefer a more traditional look for the character. And being somebody that is a fan of comic books, I understand this. For example, a lot of people, I even had people call in and t uh, tell me that I was a racist for being upset that there were certain Marvel characters when different Marvel movies were coming out that were a race different than they are in the comics. But here's the thing. It had nothing to do with the race itself. I just want the characters in the movies to look like their characters in the comics. Perfect example. Topher Grace. I was furious when I found out that Topher Grace was going to be playing Eddie Brock. Not because I don't like Topher Grace. Not because I don't like white people. Because Topher Grace is a shrimpy little stick man. And Eddie Brock is a huge, muscled-up dude in the comics. In fact, even though I haven't seen the Venom movie yet, honestly, it doesn't really look like my kind of thing. I don't know whose bright idea it was to make a Venom movie without Spider-Man, but whatever, Sony. Uh, but Tom Hardy was a perfect cast for Venom. And so you see right there, it had nothing to do with race. It had a lot to do with whether or not the person actually looks like they're supposed to look from the comics. And considering that I really want a live action movie version of the stories that are told in the comics as opposed to a reimagining of it. There are a lot of people that kind of see a similar light for the new Disney movies because these aren't just new movies telling the same stories. They're actual remakes of the old movie. There's a stylistic consistency between the two. Beauty and the Beast is basically just a carbon copy. I mean, it's just like they, they looked at that movie and said, all right, for the most part, there's a few exceptions here, but for the most part, how can we make this movie exactly the same in a live action version? There was very little differentiation in that one. And that's fine. That's, that's the route that Disney chose to go. And they did in certain ways, a similar thing with Aladdin. They're doing a similar thing with, or did a similar thing with jungle book. Um, there, there were some slight changes, but basically they were trying to make carbon copies of the movie and make it a nostalgia trip that specifically points back to the art style of the original animated classic. And people were kind of expecting that with The Little Mermaid. It's pretty clear that that's not going to happen because they're taking the main character and making her look absolutely nothing like the original character. And to sort of prove my point here that it's not necessarily a race thing if you wanted a more traditional Ariel, I want you to think about this with Genie. Do you think people would have complained if in the new Aladdin they made Genie's skin green instead of blue? Of course there would have been. Why? 
because Genie's skin is blue in the animated feature. That's not a race thing, there's not really blue people and green people, but they would want the character to reflect how they look in the original medium, in the original format. I don't remember anybody that had a problem with Will Smith playing the Genie. In fact, I said this after I came out of it, that was because they didn't try to do a carbon copy of Robin Williams and they tried to take the character in a different direction because nobody can replace Robin Williams. They probably did the smartest thing they could have done with doing a very different kind of genie with Will Smith. But there was an artistic consistency between the old animated Aladdin and the new Aladdin by making genie a giant blue-skinned magical creature. And people were kind of expecting the same thing with all these remakes, including... The Little Mermaid, and so I understand people not necessarily being upset, but, you know, a little disappointed that the live-action version isn't going to look exactly like the animated version. Just because somebody does think that does not necessarily make them a racist, in the same way that somebody that, if they had made genie skin green instead of blue, would have been a racist for believing that. It's It has a lot more to do with the artistic consistency than it does the race of the person actually playing it. And as somebody that is a huge comic book fan and has been disappointed by some of the comic book movies where the characters look very different, I totally understand that. In the same sense, I would be very upset if they had a white person playing Luke Cage or Black Panther or uh, any other character that isn't white. Um, you know, uh, just going off, off the top of my head here, Robbie Robinson from the Spider-Man universe. That wouldn't have made a lot of sense. And so there is something to be said for the artistic consistency that they're striving for and a fan that is a little disappointed that the movie's not going to look exactly like the animated feature. I, that's understandable, and that does not necessarily make that person a racist. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is... I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.